In this short video, we're just going to look at three WordPress plugins for capturing email addresses on your website. And these are all through FeedBurner. So the first one we're going to look at is a plugin for the widgetized area. Now that's usually the sidebar, but you can also put it in the footer. We're going to have a look at this little pop up here, which is very handy and works with various different types of pages, very subtle. And we're going to have a quick look at this, which is called a slide up this blue item here, no matter where your visitor scrolls, it stays on the page. So let's get straight into it. So first off, we're going to look at the FeedBurner form plugin because it looks pretty versatile and quite nicely laid out and designed. So here's the back end FeedBurner form. I've dragged it into the active widget area and you're allowed to, of course, choose a title and some arbitrary text. Now, it's both a benefit and a problem depending on how you look at it. The icon URL, that means the actual logo for the RSS feed, you have to select and choose. So if you want something in five minutes with no hassle, this mightn't be for you because otherwise it'll look fairly poor. But if you have a good image and allow it, it allows you to choose an image, which is quite cool if you really want to customize it yourself, again, you can customize the button what it says in the email field. So that's where you actually type in your email. So enter email here is fairly standard, but you can choose what you want to say. And of course the feed name. Now the counter is another issue. Some people will love to have a counter, particularly if you want to boast about how many readers you have. You can also change the message from readers to subscribers or community or whatever, uh, which is very versatile, very good. And of course you can change the colors either to make it blend in with your colors or stand out from your colors or your website, whichever way you want them. I'll choose not to have it at the minute just for the sake of neatness. But as I said, some people will appreciate the number for social proof. Other people, if you don't have that many subscribers, you don't really want that there because if you only have 12, you don't want to really be telling people because that might put them off. Now, the other thing which is quite cool is, I'll just highlight it here so you can see it clear, is that you're allowed to either display the credits or not. Again, it could be slightly messy if you want to keep it in. could uh, knock out the balance of the whole thing slightly. But if you're happy to have it in there, again, it could be the social proof that it's Google feed burner for the brand recognition that's taking your visitor's email. Some people are very conscious of where they're giving their emails to these days and that could be a little bit of a help to them, particularly if they already have a Gmail account or anything like that. They know Google already has some of their basic information, so it's not so much of a problem. So that's really the back end of the feed burner form. So here on the page is what it looks like. It looks a little bit unimpressive because the button does not much CSS on and the logo isn't exactly ideal size uh, or style. And just the whole thing isn't particularly impressive. So there are some problems with this, as goes the standard or style of your sidebar. So what I did was, because it seemed a bit strange, I tried it on another one of my test sites. So we're going to have a look at that now. And this is what we see. So as you can see, this is already an awful lot better. You have a bigger statement and a nicer font. And as you can see, the button here is orange. For some reason, the button was gray on the other version. So again, this has to do with the CSS of your theme. So my advice to you would be, this could be a very handy, neat little tool if your theme supports it looking well. If it makes it look a little bit shabby and shoddy, then you're gonna have problems. Because if you look at the, ver the difference, look at this, it's smaller, it's less noticeable, there's, for some reason, there's no field text in this version that I downloaded, and the button is very plain. Also, this is hardly viewable or noticeable at all. Whereas in this version, it has a nice blue color and it's that bit more noticeable while still being subtle. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at the follow button from FeedBurner. So this looks like a, quite a different layout to a button. So it looks like a good, good comparison so once your feed burner ID is saved, you can actually just visit your site to see the effect. And if you look down here at the bottom right hand corner, there is a follow button. And as you roll over, it brightens up slightly. Click on it. And this is what your visitors will see. So follow getting there 101 or the name of the blog. 
get every new post delivered to your inbox. Just join other followers and the email address and a nice subscribe button. It does look quite well. If you look very carefully, there's a nice little bit of shading around the edge, which makes it stand out. And it's those little touches that make it look that little bit more professional than it might have been otherwise. The styling is quite neutral, gray, nearly black, will go with an awful lot of website designs. And it'll also mean that that follow button will actually be quite noticeable because it'll be different to a lot of the rest of the colors on many people's sites. Now it mightn't be as noticeable at all if your coloring is black or gray involved in it, then it won't really stand out. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at the feed burner footer slide up. So here we put in our feed burner URI. Now I believe that's the same as the feed burner ID, but it is slightly confusing that they call it the URI. And then a tagline, which they suggest as an example, subscribe to my email for updates. So we put that in, that's fine. Ah, this is very handy. This stops you annoying a lot of your return visitors so that if they sign up or if they close it down, it won't show them again. That's very clever as well, okay. Right, and again, you can change the default button so that instead of subscribe, it says join us or join our community. So that's quite flexible, that's rather good. And we'll just click save changes to see what happens. It does. So what we have here is subscribe to our updates, enter our email and subscribe now button. To be honest, the CSS in that isn't particularly beautiful. It looks a bit kind of website standard of about 10 years ago. The shading isn't as perfect. There's no gradients, uh, for example. And as I said, it is flexible. It is quite good that you can put in your own comments. And as it says, it's always got this little email symbol of the letter and then the instruction to enter your email here. Now there is a lot of flexibility with that, which is excellent. Right, so oddly on this one page, you can see the rough outline of the three plugins that we've looked at so far. If you want it most noticeable, I would suggest, and most customizable, I would suggest going for the feed burner form for the widget because it goes neatly into the sidebar. Now, as I said, it looks poor here because there's something odd with the CSS of this theme. But if you look at this example, it looks that bit more impressive. And as I said, I didn't put too much time into customizing that. You can change the image there and change the color and the background image and all sorts of stuff. So it's very customizable. It looks okay straight out of the box, but you'd be better off customizing it. As I said, if it fits with your theme, great. If it doesn't, it might not look quite so well. The footer slide up version, as I said, I think from some of the documentation that it does take some CSS and it allows you to actually make that look a lot smarter, which is good. But to be honest, it's a little intrusive anyway. We look at the screenshot here, it does look a little bit better. For example, the subscribe now button is more colorful and whatnot and there's a nice little logo for the person there your first name so you can ask a question you can get the name as well as the email so there's some flexibility here and there's also you can give them your viewer an option of never showing it again if it does irritate them so that's very positive it is slightly more confusing in asking uh, for details it doesn't just say your feed burner id it says your feed burner you or i which is slightly more confusing and it plummets me for a minute i had to work out what that was as goes the follow button, if you want something that looks well, very quick solution straight out of the box will work for you. I'd probably go for the feed burner follow button. The only problem is you can't change, or I couldn't see how to easily change. It may in updates be able to change, hopefully so, some of these details. So it's not very customizable and you appear to be stuck with the messages that, that it's set up with initially. But that said, it does look very cool and it is a very suitable option for most people straight out of the box.